did only have my mic audio going on this time around. Let me turn my fan down a little bit. No, not off. I'll die in here. Everyone excited? I'm excited. Hello, hello. So we've got a couple of people on here. We'll get going in just a few more minutes. I'm excited to get this beautiful bag going. I have about four different bags <laughs> that are somewhere in the process. Five if you count the tail end of my massive plastic zipper on wallet spree. Man, I did not stop doing that pattern. It was a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this one. Looks like our system is behaving itself today. So one of the first things we're going to talk about is where we left off last time around, and that is having these guys to the right length. Um, and making sure that they are uh, burned off at the edge. And, and I'm gonna show you how to do that easily, and quickly, and safely. Safely being one of the major pieces that I'm looking for in this particular uh, arena. Um, I've cut all of the gray ones to the right length. If you were with me uh, during the, the cutout session, I'm making one that's themed around Jack Skeleton. And I'm also making a Hello Kitty one, but I'm not showing anybody the Hello Kitty one until it's done. I don't, I realized that a little while ago, I liked making things in batches. When I started with a previous pattern, I did like a whole bunch of them and it worked out really, really well. So I was really happy with that. Um, so we're gonna do that, but we're gonna do it on my, uh, on the pink instead. I'm going to see if I can restart something and make it behave itself. One moment, please. Okay. So we'll flip over to the ironing board. And what I want to show you is, so this is all uh, crinkly. It's got folds in it everywhere. Um, and I wanted to show you a trick, easy way, quick, easy way to iron this out. I don't know if you guys do that, do it this way, but I take one end and I kind of iron out that section and I leave my iron and I just slide it. And it makes it a lot easier and a lot faster and now no more folds. So I figured you guys would enjoy that one. We'll flip back over to the prep table so we can measure this guy out. So we're supposed to have two three inches 
to 5 inches and one that's at least 25 inches long. So I'm going to cut these to the right length and then I'll show you the, uh, the stealing of the end really quick on one, maybe two. Uh, and then I'll set this aside and we can get sewing. So there's a three. There's a three. No, it doesn't matter if you rotary cut or these are what you decide to do. I do try and cut them straight. I just cut that one at a little bit of an angle. There's a five. I've got them right handed and everything goes angly. Angly. And you can't see it. I thought we went over to prep table. Ah. Maybe. Go manual today. Uh, so all I was doing is cutting these to three inch and five inch, and now we'll do the 25 inch. So 24, 25. Now I decided to do 30 inch instead, which isn't a lot of extra movement, extra space, and cut it off there. So I'll put all but this long one out of the way. I'll do the short ones up uh, when I'm off screen. Get back up there. Just so you can see what's going on, and I'm gonna. So the first thing that I think of whenever I have another plane is how's the air moving around me? Because I don't want a cross breeze to, you know, burn my fingers. Because I'm kind of fond of my fingers. I I like them a lot. And where did I put just out there? Okay. So. I normally do this with a lighter, but I cannot for the life of me find my lighters either, so that's lovely. But I wouldn't recommend doing them with regular matches. I have the Strike Unbox Wood Large Kitchen Matches. They're awesome. And hi, Martha. It's not my pattern. It's a Quaint Stitches pattern, and it is amazing. Uh, it is actually, I'm told, 4 a.m. in India right now, which is where the pattern designer is from. and. She was so sweet. She, she messaged me uh, this afternoon, well, this afternoon as far as I'm concerned, and she messaged me and she's like, I just finished watching your video and you're so sweet and thank you for the feedback. And she's just amazing. She's an absolute delight to work with. But anyway, back to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light the match. Obviously, make sure there's no air moving. Make sure if you accidentally drop the, the match, nothing's gonna get hurt except, you know, maybe my mat, but this is a fairly abused one, so I'm not too worried about it. And I actually have this little guy over here. This is actually a cup of water. That little dot in there is actually a previous match head. And uh, yes, I, Martha, I'm glad you're here to join us too. So everyone else is welcome as well. Even if you're just hanging out in the background, that's perfectly fine. My husband and I watch people play video games online all the time, and we just hang out in the background. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light the match. My space is safe. I have something to quench the match out in right away because obviously I'm working. I'm in what used to be another bedroom, so there's a fire detector fairly close to me. It's not gonna go off because of this, but safety first. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna light the match, and all I'm gonna do is gently basically let the flame brush along this edge because it is going to uh, melt the plastic. This is melted plastic. If you put it against your hand after you melt it, it will hurt to arrest me. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna set it off to the side. Uh, it cools fairly quickly, but, uh, and then I'll do the other one while the match is still lit. So that's why I have both ends fairly close to me. And this is my right leg. Okay, just making sure I grab the right piece. So I'm gonna wait until it's done doing the flare up piece. Now you can melt your, you, you can set this on fire, which is obviously not ideal. And as soon as I'm done, immediately into the water, because I'd rather not hurt anyone. And my trash cans are lined with plastic bags, so I'm gonna test it to make sure so I don't put anything on fire in there. And it's really that simple. And now my end is not gonna unravel. I can't even pull it apart. I can wheel it back and forth and it still has the pull, but it's not going to start fraying out, which 
is the idea. And it's a little bit darker. It's still a little bit warm. Uh, the edge is a little bit darker than it was a moment ago, but that's intentional. And that's a good thing. If you have questions on that concept, feel free to mention it in the comments and I will answer as we go along. All right, so we are starting in on page six and I'm so excited. I'm sorry. I'm very easily excited today because I was looking forward to this the entire day I was at work. I was like, okay, I get home. I need to prep this, this, and this because I didn't get those done yet. Everything's ready. Everything is cut out. I tend to, a couple of things. I tend to, when I know I have these facings, I tend to put the zipper that goes with the facing because if I'm doing a color coordination thing, uh, I want to make sure I put the right zipper with the right piece, um, especially if there's different lengths. We have three seven and a halves and a ten. These are obviously all a little bit bigger than that. No big deal, that's fine. I can cut them down, but that'll make assembly quicker. Um, when you do, so this is the gadget pocket. It's one of the pieces that has that uh, foam or uh, not foam. I can't think of the word. I used um, felt, but the, the puppy stuff. <laughs> uh, this is one of the pattern pieces that has that. Whenever I have that and I have not um, continued immediately after adhering that, I always put the two with the, the, the sides together and the right sides facing out so that if I have to move this pattern while I'm working with something else, I can just pick this up. I don't have to worry about this piece uh, accidentally pulling apart or pulling away. So a couple of just easy, quick little tips right there. I'm going to turn my fan on because again, I will swelter in this room because of course it's at the top of the stairs and this is where all the heat goes and where it all comes from too. All right. So the first thing we're going to play with is these adorable little strap anchors. So directions we're going to do a lot of that over at the sewing machine. So place a strap anchor right side up and line up the raw end of one of the ring rub webbings along the right edge and center. Ensure that the webbing is sticking out by approximately half an inch. Place the D-ring webbing in place using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I want to make sure that it's at least half an inch past the fabric so it'll be like sticking out like that so to make my life easier i'm going to really quick draw a half inch line on that and i'm just you know generally it's just, just a little it's just a safety thing so that's that's all that's there for so that i can know that when i get over to the sewing machine i don't have to go looking for it i can just go okay that's about right and since we're looking for centers place the one other over it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, so eighth of an inch seam allowance to attach the uh, webbing, quarter of an inch seam allowance to go along the corner. Everybody ready? We're going to go over to the sewing machine. Let's see if my... Wow, my system is not behaving today. We have a new sewing machine view because we have a better sewing machine camera. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew along the edge so that this clip doesn't have to be there anymore. 
bridle on the edge. I'm going to use a two and a half. So it's a fairly short stitch length. And this is just to secure it. You don't really need to stitch 60 million times over it. It's just to make sure the thing doesn't come apart while we're doing everything else. two pieces that I have the, the center marked. So place this in the center of the center and push it up until it's half inch over. There we go. And this is gonna go eight an inch seam allowance. Now this is the one where I'm gonna stitch it like crazy. And I'm using a chrome I'll be using a chrome jean needle in a minute. This one is thunking already, so I'll be changing that bad boy out in a sec. All right, so again, center. Half inch is already marked on this side. There's my center, switch up. Make sure my D-ring is out of the way. Hardware's moved, eighth of an inch in. I hate that thunking sound. So now I'm sandwiching the two, and since I have convenient little clips right here with me. And it's quarter of an inch seam allowance around the outside. And the fun thing is, because of the way that it's now set up, I need to get a magnifying glass to find all the seam allowance. is a 16100. So I got a whole bunch of needles that are okay. I would wish, just out of pure curiosity. It's like three or four bucks. I'm putting shipping because shipping is what tells you how much. They're not bad, but they're not great. I think we're both using a foot that only has a hole where the needle comes through, so it doesn't have a hole going this way, so I have to thread that through. All right, back to the front table.
All right. So turn the corner seam, turn the strap anchor right side out and press. Top stitch the strap, strap anchor an eighth of an inch away from the edge, leaving raw edge open. Repeat one through four for the other strap anchor. So we were doing both of them at the same time. So I have a snip in here. I even cleaned out my bucket. Markers I don't need. Everybody notice I have a brand new camera for the prep table, and I'll try not to do this right up against my chest, which I can't see. So yeah, brand new camera for the prep table, which means all the other cameras are updated, which I adore. Everybody can see things a little bit better. All right, I'm going to really quick fix this. out page six. Hmm. I just realized I have dye on my hands. Isn't that the way it goes? I work on a project and all of a sudden realize that, you know, you've got thread all over you at the dinner table. Thankfully my husband finds it endearing when I come downstairs with thread on my face. realizing that it was sitting there. I'm going to grab a seam ripper because I want to see if I can get this to be just a little bit more of a point as opposed to a curve. But I'm working with a really thick fabric, so I'm not really all that surprised that I've got a bit of an issue there. But that was also intentional. Alright guys. Pull out my hammer. Anyone seen these before? You know, I'm on my own. Come on, Zach, loud noise. So, that is the easiest and fastest way to condense a lot of seam allowance in one spot. I knew my iron wasn't going to get that. Loud noise. Really good. And iron this out. 
done. Now we're going to stitch along that outside edge and the D ring is very hot, so be careful. If you're a detail stitching kind of person, which I normally am, now is the opportune time to do so. Uh, this one is since it's doing a jack skeleton look, I'm not really going to worry about detailing stitching in a different color. But I will up my stitch length to like a three. He's giving me heart. All right. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Okay. So we have the very bottom corner securing piece on page seven. Insert webbing into the tri glider, which is this guy. From the bottom, over the top bar, over the top bar, and back down the other side. Now side a swivel clasp the webbing. And then these pieces. And I need one more and the rest of these go with the other bag I'm making. Okay. Did everybody get that? We go up and over the bottom piece, this middle bottom piece, and then put a swivel clasp on because we're doing the strap now. Clean as you go. Not always the easiest thing to do, but I try, guys. All right. Insert the end of the webbing with the swivel clasp through the tri slide glider again, the same way as before, but underneath the strap already in it. Pull the webbing through until it's about an inch and a half long. Stitch to secure. Okay, so I usually do this a little bit backwards, but that's okay. So what you're going to do is this is how you have it. So you went up and over this middle bar and through your uh, swivel clasp. You're gonna go up and over this middle bar again on the inside. So we're gonna give, us our, give ourselves a little bit of slack. Pull away from other stuff. We're gonna go right up against here and back down again. So I'll grab a clip so you can see how that goes. Basically what you're doing is you're basically just securing this right here. If you've never done this before, I strongly suggest what's called an X in the box. So let's get a piece of fabric with me. Okay, so pretend that this is your strap. I'm 
enlarging the whole thing so you can see what's going on. So your strap is really, really long, and this is the end of your strap, and it's folded over. So this is the part right here where it's folded over, and we're gonna stitch it down. That's this right here, okay? Everybody with me so far? What you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch, it's called an X in the box, let grab a marker. And I'm gonna look at this pattern like three months from now when I go to do this pattern again. What in the world is drawn all over this pattern? I took my markers out of here. So what there we go. Alright, you're going to do an X in the box. So, you're going to start at a corner. It doesn't matter what corner. You're going to go over, down, over, and back up. Now you're back up in this corner. So, regular square. And you're going to go down, across, and up again. So, now you've made a box and an X in it. It's the most secure way to attach basically any stitching like this. This is the way that a lot of the industry um, mass produced things go and it really is one of the more secure ways to do it. I strongly recommend it. I've been doing it like this for quite some time. But I'm OCD so I'm going to try and make an actual box square. So I just marked, uh, so it's an inch now, inch wide, so I marked an inch up, so I know exactly where my square is going to be and where I'm going to X. Now, in all honesty, I always like the second line of stitching across to be at the top, so I'm not going to start at the top. So I'm actually going to start like here and go over, up, over, down, then diagonally across the top again and diagonally again. And you can, of course, stitch over this more than once. I don't feel like I need to. So it's a short enough stitch length. But, yeah. All right. Why? Why are you misbehaving? Fail to reconnect. All right, we're going to have to do this the hard way, guys, so bear with me. My uh, automatic being able to flip scenes capabilities is being hindered. Alright, so I'm going to bring my stitch length back to a 2. Uh, I'm going to start again at the bottom. Over, over, up, over, down, diagonal, over, diagonal. Back stitching at the beginning and end. Not easier than it sounds. Keep your edges even. Vary your needle to turn. I should probably put in a different bit while doing this. I should be in between the same parts. I think I might be able to pull it off. It's been cool. uh, the, the reason I'm reminiscing is that the flip that I have in my sewing machine does not like. My foot is a specific width, and I'm right up against the dress uh, line bar. Rookie mistake, people. Rookie mistake. Well, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm just going to stitch backwards. Okay. 
So now I have my little X in the box. Oh, you can almost see it too. Yay, upgraded cameras. And, you know, contrast stitching. And it isn't too bad at all. I was really worried when I had the wrong foot in there. Doing the reconnect connect? I don't know. Okay, we'll go for it. I just won't worry about it. No big deal. I know. Thank it's, you, I love you. It's, however, it works is tacky. Yes, it is misbehaving. We will deal with it later. Um, I love you. The best fix is to just kill the app and restart it. No, I did that. That's okay. We'll try it again. I think I might actually restart my phone. So when you hear the T-Mobile restarting sound, don't be surprised. All right, back to actually getting some work done here. So I'm looking at this, wondering if I should be stitching to the side that has the padding on it or not. I don't think it actually matters when we start. I'm going to get this out of the way because I know me. I'm going to hit it with my elbow or something. Or Stitch, stitch, and 
pretty sure, we'll flip corners and turn it right side out. But we'll come back to the front table. six inch opening is going to be where we end up turning this through. So I can't leave the strap out of the six inch opening because then I have to repeat it back through. So I'm going to push it against the side that's already been sewn. Make sure everybody's flat. Make sure there isn't a bump right here between the places where I started. And I'm going to start. finish this last side. So far so good. I don't like my thread balance. I'm going to fix that really quick. Okay. And we'll see if stitch over this webbing area a couple of times. That's, that's what I'm going back to do right now. We did it on the strap anchors, but I didn't do that over here yet. I'm going to start at the corner and just do the regular stitching from one side to the other. secured end right there and another set of stitches by the webbing. Much better. 
and my phone is finally working. Don't jinx it, don't jinx it, don't jinx it. Maybe it's just that space where I usually keep my phone. We'll see. All right. We are on a, uh, step nine. Flip your corners, turn it right side out through the opening, and press. just said is why can't I just pull the strap and through there and just pull the whole thing through well there's a lot of stabilization going on in here there's this big piece of padding there's a whole which is the, probably supposed to be foam and I use my regular padding there's two I have two layers of woven views probably not the easiest way to do that it's probably a lot easier just to pull this strap up through the bottom And turn the whole thing through here. Don't forget to take the pins out. And I'm going to try not to pull it by <laughs> full webbing. I think I might be a little wishing I hadn't <laughs> done so much stabilization for my strap. But it's just cotton, so I was worried. Kind of not exactly easy on my stuff. So I don't expect anyone else to say like the whole thing goes to me. Alright. Needle up into the corner. Hopefully without puncturing it this time. Just getting back in there is going to be hard. And puncturing. Lovely. Yeah. and how to fix your mistakes, I guess, right? I think I just did it again. I think I did that on both corners. We'll try to do that. All right. Not using a knitting needle today. Let's see the damage I've wrought. Ah, I did it on the side. That's the problem. Yep. So the, the top, where I stitched at the top, is perfectly fine. I actually punctured it on the sides. Great job. All right. Let's go fix that. And again, make sure you don't stitch over your weather.
lovely. This is a pair of Craftsman needle nose pliers with some jewelry edge coat on it. Uh, not the edge coat that we're used to using, but the stuff that you put on jewelry pliers to make sure that you don't hurt the jewelry you're working on. Well, the use is more applicable than just jewelry. Okay. okay. I really proved that you shouldn't use those knitting needles. They you know, and I've used those things like a dozen times, no problem, because I've snapped these things before. Apparently, I'm just too forceful. And with all of these layers of interfacing, unless you use a H tool. so. Uh, Cindy, they are available later. They're available on Barb's Bags group in the video section about an hour after the video completes itself. And then I always upload to my YouTube channel 
which is under Altered Notions, which is my company name. Uh, so that's, it's there too. Ah, thanks Margo. You guys, seriously tell me when something is misbehaving itself. I will fix it one way or the other. So, you know, when I'm working off camera like that, you can just tell me, stop it. So thanks for the feedback. Because, you know, if you can't hear me, it's not nearly as helpful. Ah, perfect. Thanks so much for the feedback, Cindy, Margo. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. And yes, videos are available always later. You can actually watch all of the solo alongs are in there in the video section of Bart Spags group. Now, this end is open, so I want to be careful that I don't, you know, accidentally throw the stick, like, completely off into the monitors that I'm working in front of. <laughs> Again, that would totally be something that I would do. Ah, there we go. Haha, -ha, yay, being careful. All right. Hey, do you hear we have a tornado coming? I got it, too. So excited. Do you have the hatches battened down? The windows are closed. Then you're fantastic. Um, Thank you, love. I love a man who can support your hobby. Okay, now it says to put the st strap stabilizer inside the strap, making sure it's inserted all the way to the bottom. So the stabilizer that I used um, is, I used a piece of felt. So when I went to the fabric store, I was starting out and I had no money, like most of us, and I was desperately, wow, that, that, that diamond is almost perfect matched up, that was completely bad stick. So I had no money when I was at the fabric store and I was looking at the stabilizer prices and I'm like, oh my goodness, these things are expensive because usually it's the insides of the bag that's the most expensive. Unless you've got a really, really yeah, really, really, oh, the weather will be fine more than likely. If I blip out, I'm really sorry, you guys. We'll pick it up again another day. But I went to the fabric store and looked at the interfacings. And they were so expensive. So expensive. So I felt them and I was like, okay, well, I guess I can afford this. And then I said, wait a minute. This feels just like the felt. Except it has a sticky on one side. It's a little, the, the iron-on stuff is a little bit thicker. I could always use two layers of felt. So I got, like, two yards, three yards of felt, and I started using it. And as long as, yes, Lana, you did hear the emergency broadcast system go off in my area. Uh, we have a tornado warning, fun. So I've always, I've started using two layers, one layer or two layers of felt. I used one on this because I wasn't too worried about it. I've never had an adhesion part problem, like, as long as I do a really good uh, fabric stabilizer, I mean, you can, it's still sticky, like I can't pull it apart, because I just did the spray-on glue really, 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 really well. And there's no problem. So that's what I've been using for stabilizers. So if you're on a budget and you don't mind using spray adhesive, it is a couple extra steps. That's actually something to consider. I had no idea that that fan was making that much noise. I'm going to scoot this table. There we go. All right. Top stitch all the way around using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Sealing the opening closed. Stitch again, a quarter of an inch. Tip. Seal the opening shut using double-sided tape or fusible web before top stitching. So I'm going to use a fusible web. Um, excuse me. The reason I'm going to use fusible web instead of the double-sided tape is I don't have a lot of opportunities to use my fusible web instead of double-sided tape. Um, mine works just as good, but a lot of times you're doing your double-sided tape up against something that can't be ironed. You can't get your iron in that space. Yeah, that's the like big tornado soundy thingy. Yes, it is. How, how does the world look out there, oh wonderful husband of mine? Looks stormy. It looks storm. Well, yes, I would think it would look stormy. <laughs> he keeps poking his head up the stairs. 
like, honey, honey, you, you know you're on the second floor and there's this tornado thing going on. Yeah, hon, I know. So if I randomly leave you, I'm really, really sorry. So anyway, the reason I use the, um, I'm using it this time is because I can actually do the iron part and I can iron easily in this area. It doesn't matter. It honestly does not matter. I'm going to do that pokey part right there. So yes, if I randomly disconnect or the husband insists, absolutely insists that I leave, I'll, I'll say goodbye first. All right, so. I'm gonna work that corner out just a little bit more. And double check that one. They look good. So this uh, iron on adhesive has a layer of paper. So you, know, you iron it down, you pull off the paper, if you can do it right, and then you iron it again. And I also really, really like this option and this suggestion because uh, I've had times when I'm doing like straps or something like that that I've turned like this and you seal one side with just stitching. Sometimes that stitching starts pulling back and I like having that extra little securing, especially on something that's you know supposed to be a backpack. All right. So what I did while I, we were over at the prep table is I was doing this and I was wiggling it back and forth. What I'm doing is I'm pushing the back and the front edges down so I can find the seam and get to the seam allowance. So that we don't have any extra fabric along that seam. So I'm going right up against that seam. And I probably should have folded this before took the paper off. No, life's an adventure. Apparently this project, you know, this pattern is just going to be an adventure. But hey, you guys didn't want a boring video, did you? We're diehard sewers. We sew through emergencies. <laughs> That's why my husband keeps poking his head over. He's like, honey, you know there's an outside world and you should be kind of paying attention to that. Yeah, yeah. Here he comes again. Hi, honey. So the other thing that drives me crazy about when you have an opening in the side of a strap, especially one with a pattern, is sometimes when you do this, like your pattern will be straight, 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 and you get to the spot where the, the, the closure, the opening was, and it'll kind of like dip, and it'll go straight again. So I'm trying to be really careful and make sure that these diamonds, like the same amount of diamond shows above here as it does here as it does here okay that looks pretty straight but there's two sides to this okay. it still kind of dips a little bit right here hot <laughs> uh, the nice thing is it's glue, so we can kind of wiggle it a little bit, tell it to let go. There we go. Should have called it OCD sewing, right? All right. So now, assuming I don't trip on the cat blanket, we're going to go over to the sewing machine. And except my phone disconnected again. This is just a day. Work was hard. Stream is hard. Life's going to be an adventure. Okay. 
So we're gonna start here, go all the way over, up, back up. We're gonna do it twice, once at an eighth of an inch, once at a quarter of an inch. Also be the opportune time to do two different layers uh, or two different versions of detail stitching. Like if you're playing with colors, you can do one uh, outside stitching in one shade, and the inside the second set of stitching in a different one. That'd be kind of cool. Might be something I do on my other one. So one thing I want to bring up, and this is something that I really learned while doing some other patterns, is when you're doing stitching like this and you don't have a double needle, which I could have put one in here, but then I'd have to double thread and life would be interesting, is when you do the second line of stitching, you have two options. Sorry, found the thread. You can either since this is an eighth of an inch in, either you can do a quarter of an inch from the edge of the bar the strap, or you can do another eighth of an inch in from your original line of stitching. And you really kind of have to just decide which one works for you. Um, if things aren't exact, I prefer both of them to not look like they were exact. a little bit so that it looks like that was on purpose. Well, not necessarily on purpose, but not a mistake. More like. I just think it looks better that way. So what I actually did was the first line of stitching is an eighth of an inch in. The second line of, a sti of stitching is an eighth of an inch from the first line of stitching. So if while I'm stitching down here, the first time around I went straight, 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 wiggled a little bit back straight, the second line of stitching goes straight, 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 wiggled a little bit back straight. So it's all at least uniform one way or the other. And so I don't have a line of stitching that goes straight and a second line that goes straight, wiggle straight. That looks a lot more strange to me than having two lines of stitching that kind of wiggle a little bit. Yep. Phone is completely messed up. Life is fun. All right. So we have two strap anchors and one strap. And now we're over to zipper pockets. Pretty sure these pieces are going to be set aside. So let's make sure we don't lose anybody. There we go. So if you keep all of your hardware like that, make sure <laughs> make sure everything stays exactly where it should. Okay. We are up to zipper pockets. Preparing the zippers, if using zippers by the yard or longer, trim them down so they are exactly the right following sizes. Seven inch, seven and a half, and tens. Okay, so these are for the other parts. We're not to these yet, we're not to this yet, we're not to this yet. Go 
all those out of the way. And all my pocket pieces there. This is vinyl accent, goes up there. All right. So I have four zippers that we're putting in. This bag is wonderful. Not being sarcastic, this bag is a lot of fun. Okay, so we want to make sure that they're seven and a half. So this one is literally seven and a half from start to stopper. And so is this one. This one is not. So that one is supposed to be the 10. And I need my facings and cut out the zipper placement rectangle from the front flat panel. Let's pin this pattern piece on the right side of one of the front flat panels. Let me get my front flat panel. So this is my little logo piece. It's actually made on a piece of no, I'm not gonna get. See it's focused for being for being as clear as possible down here. So moving it up isn't gonna help any. So it, this is actually a piece of uh craft text from one of the previous patterns. Um and I used a silhouette machine to put my company logo on it with a uh, a fine point, extra fine point Sharpie marker. So, and then cut them out. So that's what this is. This is my company logo. And I think I'm going to put it on this top strap tab piece. I think that's where I want that to go. So that would be, oh, maybe not. That would be up there. I probably want it right here. But until I actually start putting this piece together, I'm not going to worry too much about that. But that's probably where I want to put it. Because it's prominent but not annoying. That's where I like my stuff to go. Anyway, sorry, got distracted while I was pulling out other parts and parcels. All right. So I've already drawn this square on both of them, just in case. Cut out the zipper placement rectangle from the front pack pinner pin, from this, <laughs> put it on here. That's the other part of the imaging. Uh, and we need the front zipper facing pattern piece. Front zipper facing. So I didn't do this yet. Cut out the zipper placement rectangle. Mark the zipper placement rectangle on the wrong side. I'm not going to be painfully accurate with this because I don't think I need to be, but we'll find out. I mean, all the rest of this pattern is silly and entertaining. Might as well get this one too, right? Hey, if we make mistakes, we learn from them. That's the fun part of doing these online. I did turn on another fan, so let me know if that noise is drowning me out. I, but it's a lot lower. It isn't uh, at microphone level. Okay, so cut that out. the zipper placement rectangle on the wrong side. And then the center cutting in the center and the cutting lines. why I wasn't too worried about um, getting these exact is I know I have a ruler that would be able to help me draw the line straight despite not drawing in the right place. So I'm going to 
to try something. While I was at the Garsbacks retreat, uh, Lauren Mormino uh, showed us a way about doing these. It was different. So she doesn't stitch the sides when you're using a facing piece like this. She only stitches this top line and the bottom line. You turn it over, and when you do the detailing stitching to secure everything right there, that's when you get these side pieces restitched. The reason she does this is so that you don't have to worry about um, the stitching line right here and being able to turn that corner and having those those corners that kind of curl and um, because you didn't do your clips all the way down into the corner where the stitching matches meets up in the corner. Um, I thought it was brilliant. Uh, I tried it there and it worked really well so let's see how well it works while I'm online doing you know, silly things for stuff. version for me of this this diamond piece right here instead of doing the diamond piece which is how I'm going to cut it but I just mark a line right at where I'm going to start that diamond just so I know that I cut straight between here and here and then I do those diamonds right there zipper facing, right side down aligning the zipper placement rectangle on this. So put this on this. So this is not easy. Because now I have two lines and I don't have any way, like a lot of times pattern makers will say, you know, six inches down from here, centered here, and then that's where the top of this goes. But because this is at a diagonal, that's not as easy. So I was kind of thinking, how do I fix that? I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to fold this down so that I know where that line is. And then if I just line up, so what I did was the, at the top of this rectangle, I found where that is and I folded it down. And I'm gonna center it and I'm gonna squeeze that there. So my rectangle right there, this is the top of my rectangle on the facing. Slide that up and there's my placement. Easy peasy, right? Now I am a very large lover of clips instead of pins. This is one of the few places that I will use pins. Don't. And everything's going to slide everywhere. And I'm hitting all the layers. It's just going to Oh, okay. Well, I got this one. Where we're going. Oh, and that is my front. Um, the reason I'm, I'm amazed at myself is I put two layers of interfacing of the um, woven fuse on my front panel and only one on my lining panel. And I was kind of proud that I pinned facing to the front panel. And in retrospect, after I was doing this front panel, I was like, you know, I could have just put some type of little light on there instead. But hindsight 2020 and all that. Alright, so now we are <clears throat> going to 
stitch those two lines. So instead of, so the directions stay, start in a corner, stitch all the way around, back stitch. If you're gonna go all the way around, I strongly recommend you start like two thirds of the way down. Go over, go down, go over, go up, go back over again. Don't start in a corner because you're gonna wanna back stitch in that corner. And the idea is that you have a very good sharp uh, diamond like these diamonds, that little triangle piece. You want a really sharp corner there. So if you bury your needle at that corner and turn and not have to do any back stitching right there, it's a lot easier that way. Uh, Cause then you won't have any you know, weird corner fabric folds, which is really annoying. All right, so I am gonna do two lines that are parallel to each other at the same length. So I have line one to one, I'm gonna back stitch that out either side and then line one to one, back stitch on either side. And then we'll come back to the prep table, we'll cut it all out and we'll see how I did. Hey, my phone's working again. Don't ask me. It's just gonna misbehave all day. playing the home game. Yes, I sew over my pins. It's a holdover from when I did alterations and it's a really bad habit, so don't do it. We'll be doing this three more times, by the way. Exactly what the directions say to do. To do that, to get yourself started, I usually fold it in half and do a tiny little snip just so I can get my scissors in there. And I'm going to stitch down to where I told myself to stop.
And the really funny thing is her pictures, I love her pictures, they're beautifully, amazingly done, but it looks a lot easier in the pictures than it is right here. And I've lost all moisture in my hands. So who keeps lotion right next to their sewing machine? And if so, what kind? <laughs> okay, so I did two lines that are parallel to each other of stitching instead of the standard box that we normally do. Because, see how the, there's a little bit of fabric that's misbehaving, but only a tiny bit at this corner? And you may not be able to see it. I'm working on a better camera view. There's only a little bit of fabric that's misbehaving, and it's only misbehaving because I haven't worked the uh, facing all the way to the back yet. And doing those two parallel lines really makes it a lot easier. If you haven't done that before, I strongly recommend it. I was blown away at the convention when Lauren did that, and I was like, dude, that's so much easier. Here we go. Here's a perfect example where it's all squared out. It's only because I haven't worked it out. But usually it stays like that and you have to like stitch over it. This side, completely flat and easy. This side is just misbehaving a tiny bit. And there it went almost completely flat after I wiggled it a little bit. All right, so we're gonna flip over to the ironing board. I'm gonna take these clips off and we're gonna iron it down. It's gonna be beautiful. And we're going to move our mobiles. can't forget to put my logo on somewhere. Okay, so we're going to start on this side and go this way, because this is the side that's behaving mostly. Not that, like, the world is over when you iron it down, but once you press it, a lot of things like staying wherever you pressed it the first time. So if you get it right the first time, the world's a lot easier and happier. And I think Amazon might be right that I need more clips. It's like, you might want to buy these. I'm like, why would I need to buy those? I have like a couple hundred. Yeah, it feels like there's only 50 in that cup. Not that I need 50 at any given time. Except right now when I have like pattern pieces clipped to fabric and I'm doing four different bags. All right. All right, looks beautiful on the front. Let's take a look at the back. Got a little bit of pulling on this side. This is the side that was misbehaving with us. But if I just straighten it out from top to bottom, and there it is. That's why it's so much easier to not do a square, just do two parallel lines. So much easier. You don't have to worry about getting really close to the fabric or close to that corner. You don't have to worry about clipping over that corner. You're just stitch, you're just cutting up to that line. Easy peasy. All right, back to our prep table. And let's see what's next. Place a zipper pocket panel right side up and a line is seven and a half inch wide. All of this zipper right side up along the seven and a half inch edge. Okay, let's find the right pocket first. So zipper pocket panel. There's a lot of pocket panels in here. I wish she had put what the dimensions of that zipper pocket panel are. Because there's a handful of zipper pocket panels that are here. And a lot of times they are labeled differently than zipper pocket panel. But it would have been nice to have the dimensions because like, I know what the dimensions of this zipper pocket panel but I'm not sure if I have the right one. Oh, I probably do. The reason I just said, oh, I probably do, is because the zipper in her picture example is a seven and a half inch zipper, and the long end of this zipper pocket panel is seven and a half inches, and there's no overlap. So I think I'm good with using this one. So 
my zipper is seven and a half inches exactly from metal to metal. So sometimes I cut it off, sometimes I don't. For this one, since it is so specific about making sure you're right there, I guess I'll cut off the bottom. top edge using a quarter inch seam allowance then press towards the zipper pocket panel wait let's back up place the zipper pocket panel right side up along in a seven inch half inch wide zipper right side up okay just making sure i got it right along the top seven and a half inch edge if i just read a little bit further i think it would get these things cut off so using a quarter of an inch seam allowance press the seam towards the zipper pocket panel Okay, so I am going to flip over and then baste. And I always do that basting stitch just because I like all of my zipper panels to lay flat. Um, and it'll close the raw edge. Alright, so lay it like this. We're going to stitch across the top at a quarter of an inch. We're going to fold this up, press the seam allowance towards this fabric, and then top stitch. So the right side of our zipper will be towards the wrong side of our fabric, which is what this lower right hand picture is. Just wanted to make sure. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do that one really quick. Over to the sewing machine. And for this, I am gonna, I'll just get my head on I am going to change out my zipper foot. Ironically enough, my zipper foot lets me do my walking foot. Just make sure you move your needle to the right position. So what I'm mumbling about over here is I always have a hard time with measurements. I'm not the best at that. Which, ironically enough, I'm in this business, so yeah. So what I'm talking about is when you put a zipper foot on, because it's got a bar in the middle, or you have to move your needle position over somehow, somewhere, make sure you're using the right dimension of seam allowance after you do that. And vary your needle to move your zipper pull out of the way of your pressure foot. Back stitch on both ways. And we'll flip over to the ironing board really quick. Since my phone seems to be behaving itself. So, right side, this is where we just stitched. We're going to flip it upside down. And we're going to press the seam allowance towards the uh, zipper panel away from the zipper. I've never seen a zipper, a, a seam allowance go towards the zipper, just for your reference. And then I'm going to stitch right next to that seam allowance and it's going to hold that zipper uh, panel down. Remember, we're going to do this like three more times. So now I have an extra piece of thread. I have a zipper with the right side up 
and the wrong side of the fabric. And this is top stitched so that all the layers are, are laying and behaving themselves well. Repeat to sew the other zipper pocket panel to the other side of the zipper. Press the seam towards the zipper pocket panel and baste in place. So repeat again. So right side up, zipper right side up, stitch quarter of an inch, iron flip up, stitch eighth of an inch to, to hold it down. Oh, we're too slow, Jean. And We're going to do this one more time. stitching to hold everything down and keep it in place. side up and the wrong sides of both uh, zipper zipper pocket panels. Align the zipper in the rectangular slot on the front flap panel. stitch around the zipper about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the rectangle tip. Use double-sided tape to hold the zipper in place while sewing. Check the direction of the zipper pull as well. Okay, so I'm going to find the zipper, the center of this, I'm going to find the center of this, and that's how I'm going to line these two guys up. Because I want to make sure that I get all the layers lined up straight. Okay, so there's my center. The easiest way to find the center of things is to fold it in half. If it will fold. There we go. Just because everything is at a little bit of a wonky angle, I want to make sure that I get that lined up. And I'm going to try and hide that first line of stitching behind this facing, and I am going to use some double-sided tape. I have this itty-bitty tiny narrow double-sided tape that I use for a walleye pattern, but I think I'm going to use the regular. Okay, that's okay. I don't need you to hold for very long. So the reason I don't like this stuff is I put it on Amazon, and um, it's not its adhesive isn't very strong, but in all honesty, I don't really need a strong adhesive for this part. I just need an adhesive. I just need something that'll hold it in place for a little while while I stitch it down. Especially since I'm doing it right now, I don't need something amazing. Shot. So 
So since I'm going to put an iron, a heat source to something that I've already marked the center on in chalk, which I use Taylor's chalk, so that stuff goes away when you iron it. I'm just going to put a pin there. That's what happens when you buy supplies and you don't remember what they are. And they're just kind of hanging out. Yeah, this looks like an iron-on. Which is fine. We can do all this over here. No big deal. Still gonna mash my centers. I'm gonna move my zipper pull a little bit. So I can just barely see my pin, but it is right there. Match my centers. Try and make sure that that stitching isn't showing that we did to put the lining on. Squish everybody down. stitch all the way around. Now this is the point where this side becomes very important. Make sure you stitch on that side very nicely, very cleanly, very well, because that's, remember, I don't have any stitches on these sides at all. It's an open space right now. So I'm going to start in, I always start a little bit in, go over, down, over, back up, so that you do your back stitching. So you don't try and do your back stitching and try to ma match up your corner and they end up crossing. So you'll have very clean corners. So we're going to be barely an eighth of an inch in on that guy. Over to the sewing machine. So instead of worrying about trying to do a quarter of an inch in or whatever, I am going to just move my needle. So I'm going to run the edge of my uh, front facing, or my front piece, right up against the edge of my zipper foot. And because I moved my needle uh, placement over just a little bit, it will automatically give me that nice clean edge that I'm looking for. And I don't have to worry about making sure I get it right. Bury your needle, turn your corner, up everything right there because I didn't start there. I started just a little bit in. There we go. Using a half inch seam allowance, back stitches. 
start and stop and keep the front side panel out of the way while stitching. You can choose to trim off the top part of the zipper facing panel as well. Okay, so what that beautiful sentence said is, pull this down, match up your edges. I'm going to clip them down because they're going to move a little bit. Now, she says, go ahead and, and cut this off now. I'm going to leave it until after I've stitched. I'm going to start here, stitch down, over, and back up. Because uh, I don't want to have things shift and have problems. When I start up here, I want to make sure that I move this piece of fabric out of the way. So that's going to pull back. I'm going to stitch. And I'm only stitching this pocket panel. All right? Back to the sewing machine. I'm going to flip back to the regular sewing machine foot. And I have a little clear button, which will pull the needle back to center. And it'll also reset the stitch length to two and a half if I have changed it. so that I get a good crease at the top. And everybody's laying flat again because everybody got moved around. All right. So now the, the you can cut these pieces off part is talking about this gray part at the top and this black part at the bottom. I'm definitely going to cut off this black part at the bottom because I don't want them both there. I'm not worried about that. And I might accidentally cut something I shouldn't just because it's so close to this piece, I'm just going to leave it alone. It's not going to 
gonna do any harm. All right, page 11. Back panel zipper. I have a feeling we repeat all those steps again. So, put this away. But this time I get to use the yellow one. Find my back panel. the replacement rectangle on the back panel, pin it in place. Make sure you check the direction of the zipper pull before sewing the zipper down. Okay, so we're going to do exactly what we just did again and again and again. At least a couple more times. It's going to be fun. So we're going to whip through this. Somebody say something if you have questions. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm actually just going to do measurements. Three fourths of an inch, fourths of an inch, so three fourths of an inch. Up. Thank you. 
side is mapped out. So now we know where these guys go. So again, I'm going to take this piece. Oops, we should draw that middle line. That line is actually pretty important. I'm just going to eyeball centering it because it's going to be close. There we go. And that's where it's placed. And I'm going to cut a couple of pins because, again, this is one of the few places where pins are vital, in my opinion. I suppose you could do a piece of double sided tape right along here and then just end up cutting through it. That would work just fine. So I'm going to stitch two different lines parallel to each other. I'm not going to do the short end. It's going to be quick and easy. So I'm going to take a look at page 12 because I'm pretty sure page 12 lining body panel zippers are sewn in the same manner. Awesome. Let's do all of this at once. Let's not do one piece, one piece, one piece. Let's do everything together. All right. So that's prepped to go to the sewing machine. And I need main body. Now, I have three linings. Three and an exterior. Let's double check. Lining body panels, so we're on page 12 and we're just reading at this point. Lining body panels and first are sewn in the same manner. Lining body panel and zipper facing panel. Use a horizontal zipper placement rectangle and the lining body panel piece in together. Sew so around the rectangle and the zipper panel facing panel with small stitch line. Repeat steps four through eight to sew the seven inch zipper. So I'm going to have your zipper. We're going to leave one. Okay. So all of this goes on linings. Two of the lines. Okay. Not on the outside piece, not on the main body. So, for my ease, I just took off the chalk marks on this one, and we're going to do it on the two of these. So this guy is ready to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to put him over there, and I'm going to keep all of the pieces together. So these guys are, are going to be put to the side. But I'm going to keep these pieces and these pieces and those pieces all together because otherwise things are going to get really confusing really fast. And I'm going to flatten out this pattern piece because it's been uh, mangled a little bit. So I'm just going to do a little bit of dry iron. 
because this part was wrinkled up. Finger press that so I still have a center line, so I have an idea where the center is. And the reason that's going to be important is I'm going to line up the center of these spacing pieces, the center of this, to make sure I'm not blowing over my edges, especially since this one is narrow. And by narrow, I mean I have a very small seam allowance on the side. Two hours in, guys. We're doing good. All right. Set that aside a little bit. This guy in. Line everybody up. Flip it back up. And grab a couple pins. Directionals. 
And I'm not talking about fabric, I'm talking about the curve of things. So you'll notice this a lot when you're doing straps. But it's still important when you're doing things as easy as this. When you start in one place and stop in one place, and you want to make it the same on both sides, you're going to start them there. So I started here on this side, and I went all the way down to here. Instead of going over here and going back up, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to come down here. Although I do have a walking foot, um, which helps a great deal. If you don't have a walking foot, this is even more important because if you start here and go down here and then come over here, start here and go back up, you're kind of twisting this whole piece of fabric in this direction. Because of the, the um, feed dogs at the bottom, it's turning everything just a little bit. So if I start here and go down and start here and go down, I'm pulling everything the same direction, which is why you'll see me do that Almost all the time. Every once in a while I get myself to the ground. That's why you see me start this out like that. everybody back to the prep table and work on everybody together.
one of the things I, I considered when I was picking my zippers, oops, the video is huge. One of the things I was considering when I was picking my zippers and what I was going to wear and all that jazz was not just color, but zipper type. So one of the, the zippers that are used extensively in, excuse me, in the pictures, I was a little concerned about, and maybe I'm, it's completely unfounded, that's perfectly fine, but I was concerned about the zipper pull on the back. And the reason is, if that is against my back all day long, I don't want a big piece of metal. So I made sure that I chose a zipper pull, or a zipper that had a very small pull that wasn't bulky or anything like that to go on the back. That I happen to have an inventory. I'm still being careful not to snip the um, snip the thread, but I don't have to be nearly as careful as I would be if I was going up to a corner. That and your corners are much more secure because you have back stitching right there as opposed to just the turn of the needle. to get one side of it down so that I have a crease one way and then fold it again and now I have a nice side. That works fairly well for me. stitching and then flip under and I know it looks really awkward right now it'll look a lot better in just a second <laughs> and almost no problems at these corners. They're a little annoyed because I didn't stitch them the right way. I didn't, sti I didn't cut them all the way down. But they'll be perfectly fine the way they are. Beautiful. One down. Two more to go. Oop. You de-ironed you. You wrinkled. How could you do that to me? Everything's clipped. Okay. 
That's the easy first step. Okay. We'll do that over here as well. Just make sure you don't <laughs> undo the work that you just did. birthing a bag. It always looks awkward. Birthing a bag because it is awkward. Remember to leave one of these zipper uh, zippers open at the bottom. We're going to leave the bottom stitching undone on one of these so that we can turn the bag through it. is hot after you iron it. Dual tip. Alright, that's two. I'm going to let the pattern go. Pull pins. So be careful, there are still marks for the um, strap placement down at the bottom, so don't accidentally iron those away. And there's a center mark right there too. So I'm trying not to hit those with an iron. And I kind of did, so I'm just going to put this back real quick. It looks like I only got those just a little bit. <clears throat> and this one's going to be a little rougher and I'm going to have to be a little more careful with it because this has got the double interfacing uh, the double woven fuse on this the black piece that gray to show on the front. It's not the end of the world. But I kind of want to pull that the facing to the back, of course. And I have a spare thread which goes back here. Alright, so it's behaving itself a little bit. And again, I have no moisture in my hands. a very hot iron. No, the stitching is just fine and the cutting is just fine. It's just misbehaving. And when this starts to fold up like that, I always make sure and put it so that that side is down. And if it still starts flipping up like that, I put my ruler over it just to weigh it down just a little bit. All right, so we are back to the prep table so that we can talk about directions. So I want to make sure we're using the right lining pieces for the right panel pieces. So 
the back panel zipper is stitched in the same manner as the front panel zipper using the back panel and the back zipper facing, which are the two pieces that we just stitched together. Top back zipper pocket panel. Use the vertical zipper placement rectangle in the back panel pattern piece to pin the back zipper face on the wrong right side of the exterior back panel to around the rectangle. Okay, we did step nine. steps four through seven to sew the 10 inch long all-purpose zipper in place using the back zipper pocket panels. That's what I wanted. Back zipper pocket panels. Sorry about that guys. Pen pocket. I think I have two pen pockets by the way. Back pocket panel. Oh, they're yellow. That's even more entertaining. I'm going to cut my zipper down to 10 inches. This goes with the mesh down there. That's my 10 inch. So let's just cut it up there. easier. So, yellow goes with yellow. These guys don't do that. We'll stitch all those in just a second. Lining body panel does the same thing. Zipper pocket panels. So the rest of the zipper pocket panels go with Sorry, I had to get myself organized there. Uh, I'm gonna have to change thread color to work the zipper to the uh, linings just for those parts. The detail stitching around the outside I'm gonna do again in black. So we'll do these in white really quick. We'll do that first when we get over there. And to recap, this goes here, then gets flipped up, stitched again, and then this goes on it. So we'll keep all these guys together. And that'll go over to the sewing machine. We're going to do the very similar things to these guys. Actually, I'm going to cut these off at seven and a half because I struggled a little bit. I'm hearing some more thunder out there. It's awesome. So I struggled a little bit. Part of the reason that I had a problem was that when I was stitching again, one of my needles broke on the metal tip at this this part right there. So I'm going to cut these off so that doesn't happen again. But these are seven and a half inch zippers. Usable space. So I'm being very careful to make sure that I cut them off just right. So these we will stitch second. And I'm going to do all of the easy stitching first. So and none of the top stitching. So I'm gonna stitch this part, and then I'm gonna stitch this to this zip, to the zipper without doing any of the top stitching all at once. So I'm kind of doing the steps a little out of order, but it will be okay, I promise. All right. Let's flip over to the sewing machine and knock this out. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change over to white really quick. Uh, 
because I don't want to do that bad. I know. You want my crush over now. I'm going to flip over to white really quick because I don't want the black thread to show. So I don't want the black thread to show um, around the line there. Uh, I will end up flipping back again a little while later when I stitch around the outside of the pocket. not to take your zipper pull on the edge of your panel. Like I just did. Apparently today is mistake day. So what I was talking about is normally we go over to the, the iron, we fold this back, we uh, iron it down, we towel stitch it, and then we come back and put this panel on. But because I'm trying to keep everything going at a good clip, I'm going to stitch the other pocket panel on right away. to very quickly thereafter top stitch it down because we don't want black top stitching on this guy. And it's actually a little easier to ow hot pull this apart. And yes, I always piece together my interfacings on pocket panels, in case you're curious. There we go. Now I'm going to be able to top stitch right away, and then we can change our thread color back.
useful because it keeps everything in line. takes a really long time to think about whether or not it wants to give me the bobbin case or not. Likes to consider these things. My sewing machine is kind of full, so I think I have some room. going on.
these two to the ironing board. And we're going to do what we did just a little while ago. Easy peasy. And hot. Easy peasy and hot. <laughs> Pull up. I'm going to tell myself that every single time now. Just because it's such a fun thing to do. Let's try and put it back on, especially after you've already stitched it. Because what if you start putting it on? Put it on wrong. Like one zip. <laughs> you've got your tape like this now. And you've already got stuff stitched down, so now you have to either pull it back off do it again or restitch. Neither of which is particularly fun. All right, back over to the sewing machine to top stitch these two babies down. In just a second after I iron this flag. Because I'm being OCD and I really need to stop that because I don't get anything done. center thing again. It worked really, really well. Just happy about how that turned out. And can we try this one without the tape? 
Let's try. Let's try without the tape and see how it goes. We'll do a few clips. <laughs> I don't want to mess this up. I've already done enough messing up today. <laughs> all right, so start in one place, go all the way around, stop right up against the edge. Find some more middles. Clearly, I am not confident enough in how this is going to turn out, so we're going to do the glue on stuff. So what I'm talking about is this iron on uh, tape, and the reason I keep waffling is because it's going to waste time, but it's going to make it look right. So there you go, that's the trade-off. I mean, I won't do the whole thing. Because I also don't want to waste supplies. But I'm definitely going to do a good amount of it. So that it doesn't start shifting on me. Here, iron be helpful. And you don't have to get the exact middle, by the way. I was just finding a place in the middle. It was close to the middle. Did you notice I put these put backwards? One zips that way and one zips this way. By the way, that was not intentional. <laughs> that was just moving right along. Thinking nothing of it, despite there being a warning to make sure you put the zippers pulls in the right direction. to unzip down, not to unzip up. That would end badly. Stuff would fall out. So, put that there.
I don't tend to do one thing at a time. And hey, if you do, this might teach you how to stack things at the same time, and it might in drive you insane. I'm hoping not to drive you insane. down, tape down, however you want to call it. This one goes left to right. With any luck, whoever buys this will not be driven insane by them going the opposite directions. Maybe they'll find it entertaining. Or maybe they'll find it annoying. Or maybe they won't notice. on the outside of these and these guys are done. Turn your pocket. Just turn your pocket. Yep, gotta leave one open, but you know. I'm trying. All right. So around the corners. So I start a little bit in, go all the way around. Shorten stitch length. Took me that long to figure out what you were saying. <laughs> So what she said was just turn your pocket. She meant just flip your pocket over. Dear Christy, stop being a doorknob. So here. Let's see on my oh, you guys were on the ending board, I'm sorry. My phone stopped working. So a dull moment. So I just stitched this one right here. 
and the pocket opens the way I would expect most pockets to open from left to right. Now that's me. And I was saying, oh, it's too bad. I have this one upside down. Oh, well, I guess the people won't be annoyed by it. I'll fix that later. She's saying, just turn your pocket. Just turn your pocket. <laughs> Good call, Kathy. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you. Just one of those days. It was rough at work. Get home. Tornado warning. Just one of those days. I've been having some consecutive Mondays. you. Thank you so much for helping me. Yes, I'll fix that later. <laughs> yep, totally having a dumb moment. toss white back into my machine to go all the way around there and then turn this off. But I'm going to do these guys first. Everybody has a dog moment, right? 
This one, I need to fix this stitch right there, so I'll do that one later when we're offline. This will be the last of it, guys. We're almost there. So make sure you catch all of these layers and all of these layers. They're a little bit tiny, but don't touch any of the body piece. pockets page 13 when we get together next week so let's see how much we have left if you don't want to get uh, if you don't want to want to know don't listen we have miscellaneous pockets including mesh pocket and gadget pocket and then we get front flap panel zipper gussets oh we got a good amount to do people if i didn't have so many dirt moments we'd be good We just might have to do another day after next week. Because we are on page 13. And it looks like it splits a couple of times because we're doing style 2 instead of style 1. So obviously no styles. Follow style 1 directions. So we have, there's 31 pages and we're on 13. So we'll make it. All right, guys, I hope to see you back next week. Uh, thanks so much for sticking around through the whole thing. I appreciate it. You guys have